Jets are on the verge of taking that first big step toward the ultimate goal. Two wins against the Braves this week would secure a second NL East title in the last three years. Steven Strasburg looks to cut the magic number in half tonight. It's been cloudy in Atlanta all day long. No rain yet, but a couple of folks might be bringing some umbrellas into the ballpark. You don't want anything to douse what the Nats are doing right now. They are on the verge of something very special. We've known it's going to come for quite a while now, and this is the place where it could happen. Bob and FP, so here we are. They got the job done in New York. Now time to finish the job in Atlanta. Yeah, I talked to a lot of the guys, and they all don't have the same opinion, but the most, most of the guys I talked to said they want to clinch here against the Braves. All right, let's look at the numbers. Of course, the magic number is now four. The lead, three and a half, just about a month ago, has increased by a quantum leap, and here's what's left. Three here, four at Miami, and then the Mets and Marlins in D.C. next week. And I have to give you some props, my friend, because back on August 8th, when the Nats were in the process of getting hammered one night here, they made a strong comeback. You were the first one to say, might mean something that they almost came back and won this game. Yeah, I thought I heard the click that night, and I thought it was the turning point of the season. We're going to go back to August 8th. You remember Steven Strasburg with a rough start. He had given up four home runs. It was 7 to nothing Braves. And then all of a sudden, they start to battle back in this game, and you're seeing a team fight against a ball club that they haven't played good against. And all of a sudden, it's a 7-6 to six game. They had a chance to win it with the tie and run on second base. And it just didn't happen. After that game, they went on to win 11 of their next 12, 13 of their next 15. They're 23 and 11 since. They were up three and a half games on that day. Now they're up 10 and a half games. So they came back the next night and won it. The 10 game win streak in the middle of it. The turning point of the season was a seven to six loss against the Braves right here at Turner Field. Yeah, and then they took care of business against the Braves in Washington as well. So the bottom line is they've beaten them five out of the last eight times. A 4-1 win that time. So yeah, there's been a turnaround. So five of the last eight, runs allowed down, ERA good by the starters, and the batting average with runners in scoring position. A quantum leap from what it was earlier in the season. Now another guy who needs to take that step is Steven Strasburg. He's not been that good here in Atlanta. No, he's got a seven earned run average, seven plus earned run average at Turner Field this year. But you feel like he's turned the corner. The fastball last time out, the velocity high as it's ever been this year. The command has been good. He had a tough luck loss last time out against the Braves. But he's looking to put those demons to rest and really stomp on a Braves team that hasn't been swinging well. Number one in strikeouts in the National League. Tight for number one in starts. He's in the top eight in innings pitch. Those are significant numbers. And a 3-4-6 ERA tells you he should be better than 11-11.
Number two in center field, Span. Denard Span. Fans yep. love this guy. He's one of the best leadoff guys all of baseball right now. Denard, that on base percentage at 352, and he's eighth in the league at hitting. But let's talk the other guy on the other side of the ball, and that's Steven Strasburg. FP, it's kind of interesting. His career at Turner Field, not great. One and three with a nearly a 70 RA. In seven starts, he's only pitched 28 innings career in this ballpark. We're going to talk about a lot during the broadcast tonight. Some people feel like the mound here is kind of off center. Steven has actually told me as much. So maybe that has something to do with it, or maybe it's that he's received two or less runs of offensive support 11 times in 16 career starts against the Atlanta Braves. And then there's Irvin Santana, the man's a 14-game winner this year with a 376 ERA. In his big league career, 119 and 98, one and two career against the Nets. So there's your pitching matchup. Two talented right-handers. But Strasburg doesn't have to pitch to Anthony Rendon. Santana does. Coming off a record-setting 11-hit four-game series in New York. The Nats won three out of three. They'd love to take two in a row here in Atlanta and delete that magic number. going to roll in this series. Third base side where the guys are hanging out and waiting for this one. Our first base side where the Braves come home having been swept at Texas over the weekend and certainly that was a shocker to nearly everybody. Visit trainsearch.com. Find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. So weather in the area. It's muggy at 73. Temperature is 77. The Braves at home are 40 and 31. The Nats on the road are 39 and 35. Getting ready for the 16th meeting of the year between the ball clubs. And Denard Spann, two years ago, had 38 doubles with Minnesota. He tries to match that and go way beyond it. We think he will. So in road series openers this year, the Nats have won 15 of 24, getting off to good starts. And the Braves coming off a 2-7 and seven trip. And, of course, that was part of that in D.C. and then Texas. So here's Denard. Highlighting the lineup that is second in the league in runs scored with 636. And then Rendon's red hot. Worth swinging the bat well, so is LaRoche. So is Desmond and Harper and Ramos. I mean, it's endless right now. And then you have Asdrubal Cabrera, who has nine career hits and a home run against tonight's Atlanta starter, Irvin Santana. Longtime angel. He's had a pretty solid first season here. And you see his arsenal right there. Fastball 94. Slider's best out pitch at 86 miles an hour. He's got a change up to go with it. And you remember his last start against the Nats, and that was his last start on September 9th. Six to four loss. Gave up six runs on eight hits in just five innings through 99 pitches. And the Nats had that four run first, so they jumped on him early. They got four in the first, one in the second. 
one in the fourth for their six runs. Jordan Zimmerman had the win. Drew Storm had his fourth save, but they were not patient with Santana last time they faced him. They were getting on that first fastball. Yeah, they had four runs on five hits in that inning. He also walked Jason Worth to set up some men on base action. So the defense for the Braves tonight behind Irvin Santana. Upton, Upton, Hayward. The outfield, Simmons Johnson left side. Goslin Freeman right side. And Christian Bethencourt behind the plate. Yeah, the young receiver, we were impressed with his arm and his bat in D.C. last week. He's 0 for 7 career against opposing base runners. And the Nationals are within six deals of reaching 100 this year. This is a veteran crew. Tim Timmons, 16th year, has the plate. Tim Welke, 31st year, the crew chief. Tom Hallion, 22nd year at second base. Ed Hickox, 10th year. He's at third. The Darts fan, second in the league in hits. Here we go. Right in there, we're underway at 7-11 here in Atlanta. Talked to a lot of players in the clubhouse today, and the majority of them want to clinch here against the Braves. Get it done, huh? A lot of guys said we just want to clinch, but more than, I would say way more than half of the players I talked to said they want to do it here. It would mean a lot to them. And I'm sure on the other side, the Braves don't want the Nats to clinch here. So even though the Braves are scuffling, they're going to be playing their best. Yeah, that uh, not in our house feeling that we talked about over the weekend. Span got jammed. That ball cutting in on him. Freddie Freeman, too. Santana for the first out. Anthony Rendon has homered against this pitcher this year. And that was Friday, August 8th, a three-run bomb in the sixth inning. Through the rain. And that was the game we showed you in the open, the one where you heard the click for the first time. Down seven runs, they came back and made it a seven to six game. But that blast by Rendon was one of the keys to their, I guess, comeback. I think sure. the reason you thought was the turning point in the season is it was the Braves. They had owned them. You're thinking, oh, my gosh, four home runs, seven to nothing. The season could go either way right here, and it looked like it was going the wrong way, and they came back and made it a ball game. Well, thanks for pulling me off the ledge that night. Because <laughs> you, like I said, you were the first one who was on to that situation. That homer by Rendon, by the way, made a 7-1 game, 7-4. to four. So Anthony hitting 400 now, his last 15 games, 24 for 60. Two for nine this year against Santana. With a home run and a double, plus two walks. If it sounds quiet, it's because it is. Smallest crowd we've ever seen in this ballpark. Change up, strike call. This park is one of the bigger ones in baseball seats, over 45,000. And I would just make a rough estimate that there's four to 5,000 people in the park right now. It's a create your own atmosphere trip so far for the Nationals. Yeah. I would say a pennant race is enough atmosphere. Yeah, I think you can create your own in game number 149. 2-2 two, two to Anthony Rendon. He got jammed, and it was close enough. He was hacking. Maybe that strike two call in his mind, because that was a similar location up and in. So the Braves in this ballpark have beaten the Nationals five out of six this year. Nine and six in the season series, but as we mentioned earlier, Nationals five of the last eight. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball down and away. Two down. That's a pitch that wasn't really there for Santana last time out against the Nats. That slider with a tremendous downward tilt to it. Look at him get on top of that in the late movement. And don't try to go the other way, but that thing broke way too much late. Santana 165th strike out of the year. ERA not exactly low, 3.76. He 
He's gotten some run support this year, but he's given his team a chance to win for the most part. And Jason Worth is four for 14 career against him with a home run. That yeah, slider's good early from Santana. Real good. As good as I've seen it. He has just deceived two really good hitters with it. Target in. And it must have been low. Beth and Court getting in position to receive a pitch under the hands of Jason Worth. Breaking ball, that one hanging a bit. Kind of disappears up into the twilight. Who sees it? Hayward. He's got it. Ground ball, strikeout, and a pop up. Santana off to a good start. Strasburg next. and batting average 14th and runs only San Diego scoring fewer don't blame Freddie Freeman 13 hits during a 10 game hitting streak that was just getting underway in D.C. last week he's in the top four in extra base hits the top five in hits and runs in the National League and he's second in doubles with 41 a hit machine in that number three spot he's been tough as has Upton and Hayward on Steven Strasburg. You know, we talk about velocity a lot with Steven, but last time out, his fastball averaged 95.9 miles an hour. That's the highest it's been all season long. The command was good. A 6 to 2 loss last time out against the Braves. About three runs on seven hits, but struck out eight Braves, walked nobody. Last three starts for Strasburg, he has 21 strikeouts and zero walks. So the command with power has been exceptional for Steven lately. 25 year old rookie out of Virginia. Phil Goslin leading off for the Braves. He's 25 for 85 in his first 34 big league ball games. So a batting average of 294 for Freddie Gonzalez. An offense that could really stand to find out who their leadoff guys are. That sounded okay off the bat, but it's easy for Span. One out. So they've got Goslin and Simmons batting one and two. A change from just a week ago. I'll set the defense for you for the Nats. There it is. Harper Spanworth, your outfield. Desmond Rendon left side. Cabrera LaRoche right side. And Wilson Ramos behind the plate. So they were going Hayward Goslin for a game last week. They went Hayward Bonifacio one night and Bonifacio Goslin the other. So Freddie Gonzalez kind of searching. Who's going to get on base for me? Andrelton Simmons, five out of 13 during a short four game streak, and checks in at 242. Good breaking ball had him reaching. 
Well, when you've been limited to two or fewer runs in 55 of your 149 games, your skipper is going to be searching for any kind of combination that could push a few across the plate. Eight and 47 when they scored two or fewer runs. That's a 145 win percentage. Mm. Strasburg goes inside with 96. Nice little purpose pitch on 0 and 2. So Freddie Gonzalez right now this year's ball play, uh, club one game over 500 75 and 74. And of course the Braves were the talk of the National League. When they started the season. So hot. You want your stat of the day. Waiting. Since April 29th the Braves are a half a game better than the Astros. They started the season 17 and 7. And that was on April 29th. Since then, no bueno. Off speed pitch in the dirt. Good job of smothering that by Wilson Ramos. Two down. Just goes to show it's not how you start. Yeah. It's how you finish if you can hang in there for a while with guys hurt like the Nationals did. So important for Steven to get through a clean first inning right here as you look at Justin. Upton who's on deck Freddie Freeman in the box right now. Let's get out of the first. Feel good about yourself. And hopefully your team gets you a few runs early. Freddie Freeman has prevented the Nationals pitchers from getting a lot of one two three first innings. He's 11 for 25 against Strasburg career six walks. Three home runs. And Steven holds on to the change up too long, 2 0. Oh. Well, the service that provides us with pitch track is down tonight. So we're going to have to go old school and just eyeball it ourselves. 96 upstairs, 2 and 1. I had that right at the top of the well, box. I think Mercedes Benz had that at the top of the box. <laughs> I'll get the sponsors in. You get know what? Everybody relax. I'll get First the time in my in. life my name's been mentioned with Mercedes Benz in the same sentence. 2 1 pitch. Tailing away, and Freeman takes it that way. 95 on the heater. Freddie Freeman has done a lot of damage against Steven Strasburg historically, and, and usually it's been with the changeup. You see Steven so far throwing the fastball to Freddie. But it's almost like Freddie knows when that changeup is coming. He's been all over it, pole side, other way. Good change up, bad change up, it doesn't matter. That's his favorite pitch off Steven. Breaking ball hit to center. He does it again. Or curve. Remember when he was having the eye problems last year? Was wearing glasses out there for a while, having a hard time. I think they gave him some kind of superpower vision that kicks in whenever he plays Washington. He's just so good on the off speed. It, it, he has trouble getting to a fastball that crowds him a little bit. He'll foul off a fastball down the way, has trouble keeping that fair. Most of the damage he's done to the Nats has been on off speed, and right there, a curveball from Steven. Maybe tried to bounce it, left it up, and a base hit for Freddie Freeman against the Nats. What new? Adam LaRoche just said, You again? <laughs> so here's Justin Upton. Seven career hits, a home run against Strasburg. Breaks his bat. Desmond easily to Cabrera, and a nice one pitch, third out. Strasburg, rather clean first inning, four, five, six ahead for the Nats.
Santana Strasburg, first innings. Junior Nationals Kids Club excited to host movie night at the ballpark Friday, September 19th. You're invited to sit on the field, enjoy a screening of the Lego movie on the Nats HD video board. Four nights from now, tickets limited. You can buy them at nationals.com slash junior Nats. Sounds like a fun night at the yard. Very cool. Adam LaRoche takes it down and in, top of the second underway. Running that fastball back to the inside edge. Yeah, he's not afraid to pitch in. And what he usually does is follows up a fastball in for a strike with a slider that breaks at your back knee. So like that. Down and in for the strikeout. I'll tell you what for a right hander right handed slider Tyson Ross from the Padres has one of the better ones I've seen all year. So far in this game, Irvin Santana's is every bit as good as Tyson Ross's. I mean, he is just really on top, almost going straight down. A little bit of break into lefties and away from a righty, but he's really spinning that thing up there nice. And by the looks of the swings, it, it's tough to pick up. Ian Desmond, three for 15 career against Santana. And that's a fastball that goes right by his left sleeve. I tell you, that breaking ball has everybody thinking it's straight. Well, that's the slider, 84, and, and this might, well, they've all been good, so it's hard to separate them, but th this is another dandy from Santana. Watch it. Ian Desmond saw fastball all the way, goes to swing, and the bottom just drops out. Fourteen home starts this year. Santana's ten and two with a three, five, and one. Four and six with a four on the road, so he loves pitching at Turner Field and early accounts, yeah. Fastball 95 slider off the table at 84. Up and in with the heater. Looked like Desmond held. But you know why he checked his swing right there, at least started his swing. They're not picking up the slider. So he sees that elevated letter high and he's thinking it's coming down. The slider's coming down. So he starts his swing, realizes it's a heater, and holds up. Got him. At the knees, outside edge. Santana, some kind of paint in this one so far. Bruce Chance not as loud tonight. <laughs> now give him an at bat or two. Well, he walked all the way around the A, so maybe that's why. And Harper taking one right off the hands and popping it out. Left side. Well, Bryce 0 for 3 with a sacrifice yesterday. Five hits, home run, a couple of RBIs, two walks in the New York series. Hitting 300 his last 31 games.
So all of the talk last time when the Nats were down here is about Bryce dragging his feet through the A. There's the first at bat walking around it. And if you watch how they do that thing, they, they put a, a like a mat down, like a floor mat, and they water all around it, and then they pull it up, and that's the dry dirt, and everything else is wet. I think like a welcome mat. A welcome mat you're not supposed to step on. Welcoming Bryce. Yeah. They could do like, you know, the golf carts or the airplanes do. Do not step. Inside to Harper, one ball, two strikes. Got him down and in. Santana as good so far as we've seen him this year. Four K's, six in a row. Johnson Bethencourt coming up for the Braves now Nationals personnel on the move Ryan Zimmerman heading south Dan Kolkel rejoining us here in Atlanta welcome back Mass and Dan thank you Bob good to be back Ryan Zimmerman down in Vieira Florida today went through a full workout at the Nationals minor league complex there and now the plan is to get him in some simulated games Zimmerman is going to play three innings tomorrow he'll play at first base kind of the easiest position for the Nationals to transition him back into action as he works back from that strained hamstring muscle. So he'll go three innings tomorrow. The plan is then to have him go five innings on Wednesday. Then he'll DH on Thursday. Then the Nationals will play things by year. He could potentially, if he feels great and tells the Nationals that he's ready to go, he could be back as early as Friday. But the Nationals will obviously take things slowly with him. They don't want to rush him back into action. But the plan, three innings tomorrow, five, then DH, and then maybe seven and nine innings from there. They'll see how he feels. Yeah, this is the ultimate don't rush him situation with where the ball club is. Could be already clinched by then. We'll get that piece thought in a moment. 1 0 pitch. It's now 2 0 to Hayward. So, what is your feeling about what happens when he gets back? Well, in a playoff scenario, you could start him at first base against a Clayton Kershaw or maybe left field against a Madison Bumgarner. Oh, that ball's well hit. Harper going back. He's under it. And if that's any indication, the air is heavy in Atlanta tonight. So, yeah, I mean, you just want that clutch bat in your lineup in the postseason any way you can get it. But I don't think it would be at third base. I think it would be a platoon kind of scenario with, you know, against a nasty lefty. And other than that, you have one of the most clutch hitters ever coming off your bench every once in a while. I, I don't know what they're going to do, but that's something you might see. Just get him back. That's all that matters. And we're glad we have Mass and Dan back. Speaking of injury reports. Base hit. Chris Johnson. I mean, a weekend with your buddies at the beach, who knows if he was going to show up healthy or not. So, yeah, we're glad to have him back.
It's Atlanta's second hit, two singles, Freeman and now Johnson. And then down to the young catcher, Christian Bethencourt. Twenty three years of age from Panama City signed with the bridge when he was 17. Back in 08. Nineteen hits in his first 20 big league games. Strasburg wants it inside bouncer Rendon turned by Cabrera five four three around the horn. And that's a big one for Steven Strasburg early in a ball game in a park that's been unkind. Enjoy a cold one. Look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. That is brought to you by Miller Light. And I think it was our Miller moment yesterday. The Buffalo doing some damage in New York. Historically, he's a guy that's loved to play against the Mets. He's been in a little bit of a scuffle lately, but yesterday in a a scoreless ball game, you're wondering who's going to break through first. Where it was Wilson Ramos, the Buffalo going the other way to the deepest part. You see Jason Worth and everybody up in the dugout. Hmm. Make it a two nothing game and it's good to see the Buffalo with his swing back and the boys making hoops in the dugout. Yeah quite an ovation for the home run and then what appeared to be a put back or a layup. <laughs> what a bigger ovation the home run or the basket. I know that's what I was wondering. Didn't want to say it but <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so with more on Wilson Ramos here's Dan. Guys, with that home run yesterday, Ramos now has seven home runs since August 4th, tied for the most of any catcher in that span. And, and the key to Ramos's home run barrage in Matt Williams' mind is just that Ramos has been healthy lately, and he's been able to play a bunch. It sounds simple, but Williams says that when Ramos is on the field, he's really productive. Williams is really impressed with Ramos's raw power and says that very few hitters can hit homers to the opposite field like Ramos can. They're going to continue to monitor his workload and be sure to give him days off so that his health stays good. But Matt Williams says when he's healthy, when he's on the field, he's going to produce. I have no doubt in that. Well, we talked about this over the weekend. 77 games this year, now 78 counting yesterday. 10 home runs and 44 runs batted in. So if you project him out, let's say 130 games a year, something like that, you're talking about a guy who's going to hit 18 to 20 and drive in 65 to 75 runs. Well, the problem is, is for a couple of years now, we've been projecting. Yeah. And I think he, first and foremost, would like to see that just happen by being out there. Have you noticed the energy in Dan's voice today? I mean, two reports and two innings. I know. Fire. You're wearing us out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, another week off, maybe. Good to have him back. We get to take a breath. <laughs> yeah, he's so energetic tonight. I bet he's got about ten reports down already. Two and two. So Santana. With that pitch, was he setting up another breaking ball low and away? Yes. And here it comes. 
Yeah, didn't exactly bury that one. Ramos able to get to it. Buffalo power zone. Yeah, from down and in to up and away. And we saw the up and away yesterday, didn't we? I mean, I saw the guys in the Mets bullpen turning around and doing 180s to see where that ball would land behind them. Saw a couple of the relievers doing 180s on the mound. Yeah. One did about a 720 with a, a fishing reel. And that got a lot of attention on some of the highlight shows the last day or two. Not all positive, I might add. 3 2 to Ramos. The Nats have their first base runner. 17th walk of the year. That'll bring in Cabrera. As Dribble has seen this right hander a lot. 38 career at bats, most of that in the American League. Nine hits, including a home run. If he establishes that inner half with that 95 and is throwing strikes in, it's going to be a tough night for left handers because the slider off of it is going to be really effective. As a left hand hitter, a guy throwing 95 strikes in, you got to get your swing going early. And you have to respect the 95, and by doing so, it leaves you susceptible to that slider. 10 miles an hour slower with break, hard to hold up. Couple of good takes by Cabrera with Santana just low. And maybe the key is getting him in the stretch. Well, we hadn't seen it till right now. Ninety four by him. Santana eighth career start against Washington one and two with a 4 7 0 ERA a lot of hitting room right side but tough to pull 94. Muggy night. Actually see some skies clearing a bit to the north of us. It's a good sign. And Cabrera. Flexing those knees, trying to get downstairs, couldn't do it. Braves, about three years from now, will be possibly finishing up their first year in their new ballpark. Aiming for 2017 up in the north suburbs. And Cabrera hit himself with that one. That's what I mean as a hitter you, you, you have to open up your hips and get your hands going early if 95 is on the inner half. That was a slider. Mm. And a good foul ball in the sense that he had bats alive but a bad foul ball. Really got him flush. Yeah, back knee on its way down. Big gap right center. 2 2 pitch. It's up and away. Santana's gone long count to the number seven and eight men. Walked Ramos. Strasburg waiting on deck to see what happens here with nobody out. A big pitch coming early right here, right now. Yeah, way, the way these guys are pitching, you give either pitcher a chance to bunt two runners ahead. Better get him. Then Cabrera will fight on it and stay alive. Out of the stretch, there you go. 394 average. STG inside the numbers, and wow, look at the runners in scoring position. Really bad. Cabrera, well hit, center field, hanging up though, and sliding 
is B.J. Upton. It was hit so well it had just enough air under it. But that's what you're talking about with as Drupal Cabrera that he has good at bats every single time and not a lot to show for a lot of them. Great play by B.J. Upton right here from where I was sitting that ball is dropping all the way. Great effort reaches out the last minute and if that gets by it's trouble. But Upton on the fly steals a hit from his Drupal Cabrera but a seven pitch at bat for his Drupal. Hmm. He got robbed by Upton. Strasburg looking to bunt. Deadens it right in front of the plate. Well done. It'll be a 2 4 sacrifice. Ramos down to second base, two out. Strasburg's eighth of the year, 24th career. To Dart Span. 34 RBIs on the year. Good arm in right, decent arm in center, decent arm in left. The Southfield has a combined 24 assists this year. Hayward, a cannon with that left arm of his. You can just look at that shot and see how very big the gaps are here. 395. Out to that Bank of America sign right center. About 390 to the far side of the Xfinity sign. Amazingly big. Span pulls it down the line. Heading for the corner. It is a fair ball. The Nationals have the lead as Ramos scores. And Denard Span does equal that career high with double number 38. Well, look at the at bat since they got Irvin Santana in the stretch. Much better. So the leadoff walk to Wilson Ramos comes back to haunt Santana a number of different ways. Great at bat by Cabrera. Seven pitches. Great sacrifice by Steven Strasburg. Not easy to get Ramos to second base. And then another clutch knock off the bat of Denard Span. Perfectly placed double in the corner. Puts the Nats up 1 nothing. So there's that number we showed you earlier. He gets number 38 right there. And there goes the no hitter. <laughs> Not to be forgotten because that was the first one to drop in. Let's see if Rendon can double the lead. And he jacks one deep to left center. Upton going back, and I'm telling you, the ball is not carrying in Atlanta tonight. I thought Spans had a chance to get out. It fell in the corner. That one hauled in. One nothing Nats. Ball on Masson brought to you by Mercedes Benz. 
You can see the knuckles back there. Phil Nicaro about to throw one fluttering right at you. Denard Span RBI number 35 on his 38th double. His 174th hit. The Nationals have an early Atlanta lead. It's time for your AT&T fan photo. Tweet us that using hashtag Masson fan photos. We'll show it to you in a broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. Pretty humid night. Looks like Steven Strasburg's already sweating through his first jersey. <laughs> yeah, he might go through two or three, huh? Yeah, maybe. B.J. Upton first in the bottom of the third. A double play ball really saving Steven some pitches in that second inning. So 18, first two innings, 13 in the zone. B.J. four for 22 career against him. Two of those hits home runs. Highest paid Brave having a nightmare at 207. You really want to shut down inning right here if you're Matt Williams. Get your team right back in the dugout. So I've talked to Steven Strasburg before. And, and he has mentioned it in passing, not as an excuse by any means, that, that he feels a little off center here at the Mount at Turner Field. You know, I mentioned it to a few people who are here every day, and they've said they've heard that before from others. I even talked to a scout at dinner tonight that said he's heard it from other people. It just kind of kind of sways a little bit that way. Not like that by any means, but you know what I'm saying. And Bob, you and I sitting up here can yeah. actually sort of tell. All that said, you know, I talked to Tom Glavin before the game, too, and he said it was never a problem for him here. So, yeah, or Smoltz, or Maddox. Well hit. And Desmond tried to get it off to the side. Should be a base hit for B.J. Upton, the Braves' third of the game. My Steve has told me a couple years ago, and, and like I said, not using his excuse by any means, but he said he just feels weird on the mound here. And when I mentioned to it, it to a few Braves people, thinking, oh, they'll tell me that, you know, he's crazy. No. And, and, and the more we've talked about it, the more people have said that, that it's something that other people have said they've noticed here as well. Yeah, and then chatting last week with one of the guys from the Braves, he said that they've actually gone out and done the survey thing, you know, with the telescopic apparatus they use for that. And they concluded it's lined up the right way. But sometimes when you look, it just appears like the pitching rubber is not perfectly lined up with the front of home plate. Optical illusion, I don't know. That said, everybody has their place. I was talking to Glavin before the game. He said, when I went to Miami, I knew I was going to get crushed. He goes, I could go to Cincinnati and throw my glove on the mound and go seven shutout. So it's just that way for players. You have your places you like, places you don't. Well deadened. Rendon never really thought about second or took a glance. So the sacrifice, each pitcher's done it. This one with one out. And it goes 5-4. Rendon to Cabrera. You know, but this isn't basketball. This isn't football where every field, every dimension, every court, pretty much the same. Baseball has so many variables based on what ballpark in which you're playing. One of the great things about the game, be pretty boring if every stadium was 330 down the lines, 380 and or 375 and the gaps and 400 straight away. You love the quirky nature of different parks as long as they don't go crazy with it. And of course, just to the north of us here was old Fulton County Stadium. It was one of the round cookie cutter stadiums like they had in Pittsburgh and Cincinnati and St. Louis, the multi purpose stadiums. And it was so great in the 90s, starting with Camden Yards, when everybody started going back to the way parks used to be. This, this thing here is somewhere in between, though. It was the Olympic Stadium. There's old Fulton County Stadium, the original launching pad. Well, I'll say this in closing. There was a few days. Well, games. a picture of it. There's a few day games at Wrigley Field where I felt like the mound was crooked. <laughs> oh, two to Goslin. Strasburg in the dirt. Ball gets away. The throw. And it's waiting for Upton when he gets there. Great recovery by Wilson Ramos. Two outs. 
The Buffalo pounced on that one. Upton looking back that he can't believe Wilson Ramos got there and he thinks he's safe. He's looking at Freddie Gonzalez right now. Tell him to go to the replay. But look how quick Ramos got there and got rid of it. And the throw beat him by a step and he's still on the bag. He is refusing to leave third base as we show you the replay for a second time. But Ramos getting rid of it. The key to that one. Let's see. Right there at Hickox. Freddie Gonzalez is turning and looking at his bench guys, but never coming out of the dugout. Now rain's falling, so the fans start to scramble a bit. And BJ will make his exit for the second out. BJ asking the skipper right now, why are we not reviewing it? He's got his hands in the air walking by his manager. Manager patted him on the backside and said, I'm get a message from the clubhouse. Right side, and then Strasburg. It's almost like the double play ball he got last inning. So three in the scorebook here in Atlanta. The Nats won nothing. When a throw beats you by this much, nobody would ever think about arguing or sitting on the base. It was obvious that B.J. Upton was out, right? I mean, throw beat him by a good two steps. He's out. But when you look at the Exmo shot of it that we're about to show you, not this one, but the one coming up. The reason he stood on third base for so long is the tag kind of went between his hands. Here you go. This is what I'm talking about. Watch. I mean, he's safe. He tagged him right there at the end on his forearm, and his manager decided not. Mm -hmm. I guess heed his advice. I mean, stand there a long time, like, hey, review that. I'm safe. I think that tells you when when there's no challenge, umpires are still going to call it the way they have for years. If the ball beats you, you're but, out 90% of the time. But if I'm a player and I was right there and it was me. I'm hacked off if my manager doesn't go to a replay right there because I, he's, he's telling me that he thinks I don't know what I'm talking about. And I saw Freddie Gonzalez turned around looking at the guys behind him waiting for room or rather word from the video room and evidently those guys might have gotten it wrong in there. Manager goes on the information he's given, right? Yeah. Pretty clear to me. I don't know. Runner on third, one out. Hey. Down by one, I, I might take a chance on that. Hey, this rain, isn't this what it did all night in New York Saturday? Played the whole game in conditions like this. Infield does look a little darker than it did earlier, but the ground crew just groomed the field after the third inning. Jason Worth fly ball to right first time up. He checks one to left center. That ball carrying, and it is over the reach of Justin Upton. The Nationals are suddenly lining the ball all over Turner Field. Adjustments, figuring guys out, second time around. 
you know, maybe that seven pitch at bat by Cabrera had a little effect on Santana because since then he hasn't really been the same. Good at bat by Ramos to lead it off last inning with a walk in. A better at bat by Jason Worth here in the fourth leading off with a double. What a sound that was. So Worth has 35 doubles now. Rendon has 38. Span has 38. There's Adam LaRoche. He has 19 doubles, but he has 24 home runs. Struck out, swinging first time up. Santana got ahead of him and then just dropped some nasty down and in breaking balls on him. And LaRoche gets one to right. It'll be run down by Hayward, and we've got interference by the shortstop, and Worth would have been safe even had they thrown him out. Andrelton Simmons got in his way as he tore back to tag up. He's at third with one out. Well, great base running by Worth to scramble back to the bag. Initially, he's thinking this is going to drop in the corner, but watch him make the last second decision, get back to the bag, and Simmons, who's trying to cross him, to become the cutoff man to third and get in the right spot, which is about four steps on the grass in the infield, ran into Worth. And he's awarded third. Would have been safe either way, but it's an eventful tag up in advance. Nice job by LaRoche advancing worth. Big spot for Ian Desmond to double the Nats lead here. Struck out looking first time. I thought he might attack early, but he pops it up. Now hopes it gets out of play. But it won't. Caught by Johnson. Two outs. Bryce Harper has had one at bat tonight, and Nate Sherholtz is about to hit for him. Ready. Ready. We're going to look back through the video during the break and see what we can find. I didn't see anything his first time up. I do know that he was grabbing at his side in his back in New York after a couple of swings over the weekend. So Nate Sherholtz who's never faced Santana is suddenly in the game. Bryce Harper struck out swinging first time up. Late breaking slider at 84. Sheerholtz as a net, three for 21 with a home run in Seattle. A couple of knocks on the road trip in New York. And another nasty breaking ball. And who knows how much notice Nate Sheerholtz was given that he was hitting next. Might have been one of those where Bryce grabbed a bat, ran down the cage, didn't feel good. And Hey Nate, you're hitting. Yeah. Bryce did play the field in the bottom of the third. And a block to his right by Bethancourt to keep worth at third, two outs. Swing and a miss. Three nasty breaking balls from the right hander. His first K's in two innings, but he has five on the night, and the Nats have a fourth inning one run lead.
And if there's a little wince in there, you know, we don't know what it is, and we're not going to speculate. But I did see like a little wince, and, and I did see him grab his side and his back in New York after a swing. So we'll let you know something when we don't know something because we never do. So you're not going to know. Let's hope he's okay. Yeah, he was taking off his gloves to hand them to the bat boy as if he was about to go out to the outfield. Something changed. He did go to left field in the bottom of the third, but obviously not feeling great. So hopefully we'll find out. Maybe well, well after the game per team policy. Simmons, Freeman, Upton, bottom of the fourth. Strasburg, 29 pitches, 20 strikes. Andrewton Simmons was jumping all over 95 upstairs. No way to get over the top of that. Simmons struck out on a pitch in the dirt first time. That was the second out first inning. And up with everything to start this frame. That's a mile high on the right side for LaRoche. Coming down fair. One out, fourth inning. New for the 2015 season, the Nationals have launched an exciting membership program called Nats Plus for full and half season plan holders. Nats Plus memberships will, offers will experience rewards and access. Call 202675 Nats or nationals.com slash Nats Plus for more details. They're Nats Plus fans. Yeah, it's a plus feeling right now, isn't it? It is. By the way, Strasburg has uh, shaken off some of his ghosts tonight. Since the All-Star break, his ERA first three innings had been 5.18. Afterwards, 1.95. Made it through the first three tonight. No runs on three hits. A double play ball, a race to runner. Ramos gunning down Upton on a ball in the dirt. He raced another. I think if he throws Freeman the same way he just threw Simmons, he's got a chance. And you saw the high fastballs to Simmons. Those were by design. He was trying to get him to chase that heater up. And I think that's the way you get Freddie Freeman out, too. Right above the letters with the fastball, and it wouldn't hurt if it's on the inner half, too. Mm -hmm. Up and in, down, away with the heater. So the curveball flipped out of play left side inside the numbers with STG. Denard Span a knock tonight. Rendon Freeman on that list. Anthony 167. Freddie Freeman 166. Ninety-eight. That might be the hardest fastball I've seen from Steven this year. Hmm. That was a, I'm sick of seeing you get on base fastball. Here's 98. Can you hit it? We said his fastball velocity last start was the highest it's been all year at 95.9. That's a change up at 90 down and in. Freddie Freeman not biting. Either he sees Strasburg really well or he guesses right almost every time. 12 for 26 career, including the base hit tonight. He's walked 83 times this year, third most in the league. Behind Stanton 
and Carpenter of St. Louis. Got him on a changeup. 91 severe dive on that one. Uh, you almost have to giggle on a 91 mile an hour changeup. It, it is hard to say for me, I yeah. have to admit. And Freeman all in on the 98 mile an hour fastball he saw earlier in that bat, way out in front of 91. I think he struck out the guy in the on deck circle too on that shot from the third base camera. Yeah, took a lot of work, but a nice job. We'll see what Justin Upton can come up with here. He hit the ball to Desmond first time on a busted bat. Strasburg pours in 96. Steven Strasburg, 107th career start. Record is 40 and 30. 17th start against the Braves. Eighth in this ballpark. Jammed him. Right there is Cabrera. It's his third three batter inning in a row, but the first time it's gone one, two, three. Connections one nothing Nats as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Steven Strasburg doing a nice job so far shutting down the Braves and Denard Span getting this party started with an RBI double his 38th in the second inning and now he's tied for fourth in the National League with 38 doubles came into this one tied for fifth with 37. Clutch two out knocked by Denard Span scored Wilson Ramos who was nicely sacrificed to second by Steven Strasburg. As we mentioned, Span and Rendon each with 38. Worth is up there in the mid 30s. Extra base hits making a big difference for this ball club. Extra base hit ability from number one through number eight. Wilson Ramos drew that key walk leading off the third. Nats didn't have a hit. And Ramos hits this ball pretty deep out to left center, and it is gone. How about the power from this man the last two days? His 11th, RBI number 45. He doubles the Nats' lead. These are big ballparks, unable to hold this guy. We showed you the swing yesterday. Wilson Ramos on a foul ball before he went deep. That's when you knew he had his hands in the right slot. And Desmond helmet taker offer guy. He's looking for a shot, but he gives it up to Tyler Moore for the slam dunk. But let's check out this slam dunk first. 
Raise your hand if you thought that one was going out of here. I didn't. And when I saw B.J. Upton give up on it, I said, are you kidding me? He one-handed that ball out of here off balance. Unbelievable. That, that might be more impressive than the mm. home run yesterday at City Field. Probably 395 or so where it left. Fastball sales high. Santana giving up his 15th home run in 183 innings. So what you just saw does not happen very often. Fooled out in front, kept his hands back. And Cabrera sharply to second for Goslin. First out, fifth inning. Strasburg next. Well, Carp, you've been commenting, I've been seeing it, and how the ball's not traveling here tonight. There's been some balls hit right on the nose that haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> and the one you're thinking has no chance of getting out of here. But watch him keep his hands back. He's out in front, so his hips slide, right? And off balance, wow. almost one handed. It's one of the deepest parts of this park. That was impressive. How strong you have to be to do that is just breathtaking. And Strasburg takes one up and in. One ball, one strike. Steven a sacrifice. First time up. Helps set up the run. Got Ramos to second from where he scored on the span double. Two and one now. He asked Wilson uh, yesterday after the ball game about that foul ball where you saw his hands and then the home run. And he said, I was thinking the other way, but basically trying to react and do the right thing based on where the pitch was. And as you mentioned, he's been trying to pull the ball a lot lately. And I don't even know, Carp, if he's been trying to pull it. He's just been coming around the ball. So when yeah. I say hands inside the baseball, it's a hands first swing where your bat trails. And when you come around the baseball, you have a tendency to cast your hands out. Wow. As Steven Strasburg has walked, and that's basically a free base run. But he was coming around the baseball, kind of hitting the top half. Casting his hands out, lots of ground balls to the left side. And his key is going the other way. So when you saw that foul ball swing, he really pulled his hands inside, fouled it down the right field line. I think over the Mets dugout, the light went on and says, Oh, that's what he's looking for. His hands are in the right slot. Either the next pitch or two pitches later, he goes deep to right center field. And, and now he's fine. He's good. Right now, his toughest job is getting the mud out of his spikes after rounding the bases. One on one out. Here comes Span again. It's up. Yeah, we were told that Bryce Harper was experiencing some light headedness, and that's why he was taken out of the game. Williams, his number seven hitter, has come up big tonight. So has his leadoff man. His pitchers on base. Rain continues to fall steadily, a lot like the game long showers in New York two nights ago. One two to span breaking ball right on his hands. Freddie Freeman will get the lead runner and that's all they'll take. Three six on the fielder's choice. So the home run streak on the road continues. As we look inside the numbers with STG this has been going on. Look at this now. Since the 8th of August. I mean, they're still looking for some of those balls the Nats hit in Seattle. Well, to, to that point, they've played in some huge ballparks with great pitchers. Seattle, Dodger Stadium. You know, City Field, no picnic as far as dimensions, and now this place. Rendon hit the ball hard last time, lined out deep to left. 
Denard spin, kind of skipping his way, slipping his way back to the bag. It's good trade of runners for the Nationals. Yeah. Strasburg a breather with a two run lead. Well, the way this guy's been hitting gaps, Span might be in scoring position. Up and in. Rendon has 64 extra base hits. Freddie Freeman has 63. Jonathan Lucroy of the Brewers, 66. John Carlo of the Marlins, 69. And oh. That fastball was 96 in the first inning. It's down to 91 right now. Might have came out a little too hot. That pitcher get excited about a start and overdo it, over boogie the first couple of innings. Right now, Santana's velocity down five or six miles an hour in his heater. Yeah. He had the Nats falling all over the dance floor. Six in a row to start the game. Four of those on strikes. And it's two and one. Braves are four behind for the second wild card spot. And with two weeks to go, that's a pretty big margin. Considering there are a couple of teams between them and that goal. The Giants up three. I think the Pirates the next squad. In the wild card. And then Milwaukee a game and a half behind the Pirates. Gave him his A move, span back. Of attention to a runner at first, two outs with one of the best young hitters in the game waiting. Rendon's going to take ball three. Well, do you remember last time we were here and Irvin Santana was pitching? Denard was on second. And he turned around to throw to second four or five times, and they had a little smile back and forth, and he was nodding his head at Denard and looking him back, looking him back, and then he was pitching. So, yeah, he, he can get all. Consumed in a base runner very easily, it seems like. Rendon went after 93 and tipped it. Span will get his head start now. Going. It's 3 <laughs> 2, two outs. We are pretty sure. He had 46 pitches after three, 11 pitches last inning, and now a long fifth. And with Span on the move, Rendon gets under one, but it's Upton waiting well in front of the track. And the Nationals are gone in the top of the fifth inning. Wilson Ramos homering two consecutive days. This is his 46th career home run, reaching for him. And then a fan is the next one to reach. Now you're back to Buffalo.
Brought to you by Nissan. Downtown Hot Atlanta. A little cool tonight, a little muggy. Wilson Ramos has hit one through the humidity and out of here in the Nats lead 2 0. Hayward, Johnson, Bethancourt. 5 6 7 4 the Braves, bottom five. Sparse crowd at Turner Field tonight. Rain still falling. But now three outs away from being an official game. Hayward fly ball to left first time. Strasburg the breaking ball and the curve didn't miss by much. 44th pitch of the night, 28 strikes. They got their foul ball protectors out right now. Best play of the year with an umbrella we saw in New York Saturday night by a Nats fan. Yeah, umbrella died a hero. I mean, that was a bullet going right at him. It also doubles as a flotation device. It's going to rain that much. Yeah. We have to worry about floating. <laughs> oh my time, gosh. Last time we started at 1050. Oh, do you not right. remember? Latest starting game in baseball this year. 2-1 to Hayward. He got his arms out. And that big strong man singled the right field. Atlanta's fourth base hit. If you're 21 and older, you can purchase beer for only $5 next Wednesday, September 24th, when the Mets are in D.C. Some restrictions apply. Get your game tickets, 202-675-NATS. Visit nationals.com slash tickets. And on that night, please handle things responsibly. We want you to have a great time at the ballpark, and we want you to get home very safely. Chris Johnson base hit early in the count. Left side, first time up. It was nickel beer night, the night my scout saw me play. And that ball hits the tarp, goes down the line, and Hayward's going to go to third base, and the Nationals just gave the Braves two bags in a 2 nothing game. I'm going to check out the throw one more time. Just threw it across the base. There was no way LaRoche could go over there and get it. Good hustle getting to that baseball and keeping Hayward from scoring. Doug DeCenzo had thoughts of sending him home. Johnson handcuffed by 95. What a good pitch. Oh, Got to go to your strikeout stuff if you're Steven right here. 2 nothing lead in the middle of the game. The Nationals do play the infield back. I don't want to give up any range and let the tying run get on base. Johnson will be late and it's out of play. If you lead the National League in strikeouts, do you really have to go to your strikeout stuff or you just pitch? Yeah. I would just pitch. Well, it is an interesting question because on this night, the number one K guy in the league has two in four innings. Just now arriving at 50 pitches, fifth inning. Which is why strikeouts are overrated, but in situations like this, they're not. And he gets the change up at 89 for the strikeout. So he got Freeman on one last inning. Johnson here. And he faces the rookie Bethancourt next. Well, we've talked about Steven Strasburg picking up his defense a lot in the last two years. Right now, Steven Strasburg trying to pick up himself. Aaron throw to Adam LaRoche. Hayward on third gets the big strikeout of Chris Johnson. Inside the numbers with Jeep and there are your strikeouts. Three tonight, Johnny Cueto. Half dozen behind. Kershaw, Bumgarner, Tyson Ross, San Diego. Bethancourt bounced one hop to Rendon, a 5-4-3 double play first time up. And if 
He had designs on leaning out over the plate. Strasburg just stood him straight up. 77 pitches, five innings for Santana. Luis Avila on his throw. Two more batters he get down to the number nine spot. And yeah, it is September with expanded rosters. Hitters count and a foul on 96. See, I love that. It's a challenge fastball. There, there's been times earlier in the season when Steven Strasburg didn't have as much confidence in his fastball as he does right now and would have thrown a change up to whoever right there looking for a strikeout. Behind the count, 2 0, he said, Here's my 96. Can you hit it? Just like the mindset of attacking with the heater. A change up right here, I think. Jammed him severely. Right next to the runner, Rendon will throw to LaRoche for the second out. Nowhere Hayward could even think about going except back to the bag. Great pitch. He went to the changeup. He ran it in on the hands of Bethancourt. And, and the only place that Bethancourt could hit a ground ball in the infield that wouldn't score Jason Hayward was either the pitcher's mound or third base. He gets jammed right here. Hits it to third base. And another big out here in the fifth for Steven Strasburg, keeping Hayward for the time being at third base. BJ Upton, the hitter. Hot shot off the glove of Desmond first time for a hit. Keep in mind, number nine is on deck. That ball opposite field, and it's fouled into the corner. Hitting 207, it's foul. You're hitting 307, it's fair. It's kind of the way it goes when you're having a rough year. I should say 209 after the hit his first time up and it a couple feet foul. But again, the pitcher's on deck. So or maybe a pinch hitter. We'll see. Well, that's why Freddie got his bullpen up and so you're not sure about who's yeah. on deck. Yeah, it could be a decoy, but it does change your approach a bit. Steven will go back to the rosin bag it, here. It might not work out, but when you got a guy with 165 strikeouts in the batter's box and you're a strikeout guy, we just showed the stat stats. I say go right after him. You know, usually I say don't. Yeah. But based on the matchup right here and numbers alone, I think Steven Strasburg goes right after BJ Upton. 165 Ks, fifth most in the National League. They have. A lot of strikeout guys in this lineup. That was 90 down and away. He's really using that changeup to devastating effect in this inning. But that was, you could tell a hitter that designated, I'm swinging at that pitch before he saw it, that that was never a strike nor near a strike. He just was hoping it was a strike and said, I'm swinging. That's what guys that are struggling will do. I've been there. Fastball, and he almost got it by BJ Upton. You step in this batter's box and you say to yourself, well, I'm not seeing it real well. I'm going to roll the dice and swing and hope he throws a fastball down the middle. Trust me, I've been there many times. Got him on the changeup. Runner at third, nobody out. Strasburg goes to work. Two Ks around the ground ball to the third base bag. Some of his best jam pitching of the year, the Honda Dua. Top of the sixth inning is worth. Jason, 308, 17 RBIs in his last 25 games, and he's one for two with a double tonight.
Two nothing Nationals, and I think we just saw one of Steven Strasburg's best innings of the year. Name that song, maybe tomorrow. I like ah. it. Let's see what you guys are doing there. Play the game tonight. Take care of business. Tomorrow will take care of itself. We'll see. Worth LaRoche Desmond, top of the sixth. 77 pitches for Santana, 46 strikes. Started, then stopped his delivery. One one. Jason cracked one to the base of the left center field wall. Last time up, it was leading off the fourth. Advanced on the line drive to right by LaRoche. Nets couldn't get him home. Three and one on a good take. Long third inning, long fifth inning. Three and two. Cracks one into the glove of Santana. I think it was off the end. I think he broke his bat. Looking right at the barrel. Nice play by Santana. Reaction play, even though it wasn't hit that hard. Sometimes that'll fool you. Snow cones hit right in the end of his web. LaRoche hit the ball hard last time. And he turns on that 83 right in on his hands. So the Nats box. No hits till the third. Ramos had walked, had been sacrificed by Strasburg, and Span drove him in. And then the leadoff monster home run by Wilson Ramos, deep left center, leading off the fifth. A hit in between by Worth, the double. And that's a changeup, 85, that drifts outside. Counts even 1 1. Tried it again. Originally drafted by the Braves, Adam was back in 2000. 29th rounder out of Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma. He'd been an MVP in the Junior College World Series that year. Made it to the Braves in 04. Then he was here for three years before he was traded to the Pirates with a minor league outfielder for Mike Gonzalez, a former net, and an infielder, Brent Lillibridge. That's a heartbreaking ball, low and inside, three and two. And this one high in the air to left center. BJ up and over. Two down. And for the achiever in you, PNC Bank has our minor league report. So batting average leaders at double A and actually single A and single A, high A Potomac. I mean, Wilmer Defoe was great in the playoffs. Tony Renda, 
Sean Pleffner. We talked about all these young guys during the season and what they were doing. I'll tell you what, it's hard to hit 300 the minor leagues for a million reasons. So the backdrops, the lighting. You got guys throwing balls all over the place. The wood that you hit with in the minor leagues, not as good as the bats that you use in the big leagues. And then the travel, you know, getting in at three in the morning and sleeping for a few hours and having a day game. So when you see a guy that hits 300 at the minor league level, it's quite an accomplishment. It's not easy to do. And Desmond, a one handed swing when it finished on that breaking ball by Santana. If he takes care of the Nats here, does he lead off in the bottom of this inning? And Desmond's going to get rung up looking for the second time tonight. That right on the ceiling of the strike zone outside edge. Bottom six, the Nats by two. We'll see about him in a minute. A big time jam in the fifth inning. We're going to show you some Geico highlights and how he got out of that jam. Jason Hayward lined a single to right. Pickoff throw to first. Errants. Hayward all the way to third. So strikeout guy going to his strikeout stuff. Struck out Chris Johnson. Then a nasty change up to Christian Bethencourt to get the ground out to Rendon. And then BJ Upton. Dirty change up for strike three. So a nice job of battling out of that jam and wiggling out of it with a couple of strikeouts and a well placed change. Well, Steven Strasburg with five on the ledger tonight makes it to 200 innings. Right now, and this is Jose Constanza leading off. That would put Strasburg sixth in the league. Here's Jose Constanza, 30 year old left handed hitting outfielder from Santo Domingo, and he hits for Santana. Career against Strasburg. He's one for two. And a block by Ramos counts even. Well, my favorite part about the fifth inning was Strasburg throwing that 2 0 fastball to Bethencourt. Here it is, hit it. And it's just a mindset that he's showing you that he, he has so much more confidence in his fastball. And Constanza is gone. Strasburg continues to work over Atlanta hitters, and now he has struck out three of the last four. So keeping that box kind of empty. Freeman, a first inning single. Johnson in the second double play ball after that. Upton in the third try to go to third Ramos 
threw him out on a ball in the dirt. Then a leadoff hit by Hayward, and he was at third with nobody out before Strasburg really went to work last inning. So here's Goslin for the third time. He has hit a fly ball to center, ground ball to second. And the fastball rides high. To short. Desmond to his left. And getting down the line in a hurry. Goslin, great speed. Ian throws him out. Look alive. The Metro Silver Line is now open. And tomorrow night here in Atlanta, it'll be Tanner Roark and Aaron Harang. The Nats owe him one after he beat him at our ballpark last week. And then Gio and Alex Wood, the lefties, take over on Wednesday night. In Miami, it'll be the start of a four game series, three night games and a Sunday matinee before the gentlemen come home for the last homestand. There's Tanner Roark who finally got number 13. Now he wants to get number 14 and stay right with Doug Fister. A little chest protector action right there for Tim Timmons. Did you hear that? That was a direct hit. Wilson Ramos walking out there giving Timmons an extra couple of seconds, but that's what it sounded like. Wow. Or maybe he doesn't even have a chest protector on. He's just in the weight room every day. I mean, that's what it would sound like if it hit you, Bob. Without yeah, a chest protector. It's a great feeling. <laughs> the next thing you would hear would be screaming and sobbing. That's what it sounded like when the ball hit my glove. <laughs> <laughs> one one to Simmons. Wow, another one. <laughs> Tim Simmons is having a really fun ride here. He says, but you're supposed to be a Buffalo block some of these. And if I'm Simmons, I'm swinging at anything close after hitting the umpire in the chat. Here we go. Second one. Oh, that was Man. a little mask action. It's like he likes it. I know. I, that might be my new favorite up, Tim Timmons. He looked like he enjoyed that. It's like Happy Gilmore back there getting hit by the pitches. Gamer. Love it. One ball, two strikes. Strasburg goes fastball. Simmons got around late. Dumps it down the line. Worth will slide to stop it and keep him to two bases. So the Atlanta Braves have had hits tonight, but never more than one in five out of six innings. And now Freddie Freeman stands in the way. Nice piece of hitting right here by Simmons going down and digging out the low fastball and watch Jason Worth go for a ride right here slides into it corrals the baseball keeps Simmons to just a two out double but a nice piece of hitting by the brave shortstop. Got a good uni work and he's dirty love it. Tough out here. Freddie Freeman base it up the middle first inning on a changeup. Strasburg struck him out for the second out of a one, two, three, fourth inning. 95 outside. Braves about hit the Nationals 5-3. Got some run back action with that at 96. Yeah, my personal pitch track says that was a strike. Got him with a 3 2 change up last time up, but he's hoping it doesn't get that far this time. Yeah. 
Strike two with 95. It's almost like Freeman is sitting on that changeup, right? You ever see a hitter just take a fastball right down the middle like that? He's telling you he's sitting soft, not hard. So you, do you go with what you struck him out with last night, or do you triple up I see, on the heaters? See, elevate a heater. You got some pitches to play around with. You don't have to throw a strike right here. Throw one above the letter. See if he chases. Counts even, two two. Freddie Freeman has 31 hits against the Nats this year. Ross Detweiler. Strasburg's pitch count not bad at all really. Into this inning with just 60. There's the change up. Three and two. Pitch number 76 coming. No left handed batter until Hayward, two spots away. Warm night, muggy here in Atlanta. You know, Stephen is spending a lot of energy and losing a lot of fluids out there. You can tell by his jersey. And a 3 2, Freeman late. Two nothing game. Big pitches here. And he throws the hook and gets him looking up in the zone. Freddie Freeman has been ejected. He slammed his bat into the ground, breaking it in half, and Tim Timmons throws him out of the game. But I think the Mercedes Benz pitch track might have had that one a little bit high. And you see the frustration by Freddie Freeman, Freddie Gonzalez, and all and the breaks right now as Gonzalez gets tossed. He kicked the bat away and he got tossed. Well, when one of your best players gets run on a called third, you got to go too as his manager. You have to. You lose respect to the rest of the guys if you don't. Freddie Gonzalez after Freddie Freeman after that pitch. Breaking ball up in the zone. The bat, he's gone. And then the other Freddie gone as well. The game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. It just happened. We're going to show it to you again. 3 2 curveball from Strasburg. Freeman thought it was up. Tim Timmons rings him up. And you be the judge of whether you thought the pitch was, but Freddie Freeman's reaction gets him thrown out of the game. Hands in the air, breaks his bat, splinters. Timmons says, No moss, Freddie. I don't like that. You're gone. And then the other Freddie comes out of the Braves dugout. This one's last name Gonzalez, and he's going too. The weird part about this whole thing is between innings, he 
showed Tim Timmons his changes in the lineup after getting thrown out very calmly. They're just sitting there talking to each other after getting thrown out from the game. So the Braves have no more Freddies. They're all gone. Bench coach Carlos Tosca will take over. And this ball game goes to the top of the seventh with the Nats still on top, 2 0. Nate Scherholz to lead off. Strasburg, 78 pitches, 50 strikes. And he has struck out Freddie Freeman twice. Joey Terdoslovich takes over at first and will get you to where he's sitting in the lineup on the double switch. Luis Avilan takes over here. First batter, Scherholz, and Nate is 0 for 3 career against him. I'll tell you what, I mean, that call at third base earlier where it didn't look like Rendon tagged B.J. Upton, that curveball getting the call. So things are a changing in, in this these ballpark. Two clubs. I'm just not used to things changing and things going their way. Yeah. Big hook, little low, evidently. So here at the nine o'clock hour, things have gotten more interesting between the Nats and the Braves. Washington two nothing. Strasburg pitching beautifully, and the Braves have stranded three base runners, lost two others on the bases. Javi Lan, 25 years of age, and a swing and a miss by Sheerholtz. Santana threw 92 pitches in six innings. Three runs, actually three hits, two runs, walked a couple, struck out six, 55 strikes. Fastball inside on Nate, and the count's three and two. Fast ball up, lead off walk. And some umpires with tickets upset about that. Well, it might have been the same height as a Freddie Freeman pitch, in all honesty. Nate Sherholtz. Takes ball four. Wilson Ramos. 0 for 1 career against Avilan. And Wilson with a swing that indicates that one could have been headed to right center. Well, this one fooled Wilson, but it sure fooled me his home run last time up. He was way out front and gave it a ride to left center field. Back to the fifth inning. Way back to the fifth inning. He gets fooled right here. You see him out front, off balance. And that's all about strong hands, folks. That's all that was. Mm. Left center field. I did not think that was leaving the premises. Hit speed 102. <laughs> when he's lunging. Lunging out front swing. That's a swing and a foul tip. So Ramos a walk a homer. He scored two runs. He's two for his last three with two home runs, three batted in. I remember our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers are donating $250 at Children's National Medical Center for every home run a Nats player hits this season. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. And a one-two, Ramos to center. 
And after that one with a running catch, B.J. Upton. He's starting to cover as much ground as Andrew Jones used to in this park. Get your tickets for a week from Saturday. It's Tyler Clippard, fans' choice, bobblehead night for the first 25,000 fans through the gates, all gates, while supplies last. It's presented by PNC Bank for the bobblehead achiever in you. 202-675-NATS or nationals.com slash tickets. Tyler said on national TV today he was pretty excited about that, but mostly because he expects they will have clinched by then and everybody can kind of relax and enjoy it. Cabrera has lined out to center, robbed of a hit by B.J. Upton, and a ground ball to second. I'm trying to think of the advantage of having a bobblehead after you've clinched versus before. <laughs> it just, just one less know. thing to deal with. Yeah, I heard he said that, that on MLB Network. He did a nice job today. He did. But he represented our ball club and organization very well. 1-1 one, one Cabrera. 1-2 one for two career with a walk against Avilan. There's a right-hander. Juan Jaime. The rookies, on the other hand, last night in their tutus and ballerina outfits. Oh, I, I don't boy. know if they represented the organization well. Well, they were good sports about it. They were. Some of them liked it a little bit too much. But... <laughs> But we're not going to single out Aaron Barrett, are we? No, we're not going to say that Aaron Barrett <laughs> might be a ballerina when he's done playing baseball. We will not say that. I'm not going there. But he enjoyed it a little too much. A little too much. I'll tell you and what. They that better... guy, they dressed that guy up, and I don't even know what. In the... That's, yeah. Yeah, he was like a, Whoa. some version of Nacho Libre last night. That's not very close at second base, and Sheerholtz is out. That's the first Major League base runner this year. That Bethancourt has gunned down. Well, there's been Benito Santiago comparisons to Christian Bethancourt. And right there, you saw the arm strength. That was a seed right on the money, waiting for Nate Sherholtz. And did they really tag him? Cabrera, and that's a fair ball over the bag. So he will dig for a couple right after the caught stealing. And Steven Strasburg took a look back at the dugout as four guys try to corral that throw. And Matt Williams has waved him to the batter's box and said, you're still hitting. He said, this is your game, big boy. Drive him in. I like it. The weird dynamic about Danny Espinosa and his Drupal Cabrera right now is that Cabrera is actually swinging the bat better right-handed against lefties than he is left-handed. 30th double of the year for Cabrera. That's that's a big one. Nice job. He's uh, 10 for 42 right-handed now, but half of those hits have probably come in the last week. And Strasburg, 11 career runs batted in. He's already drawn a base on balls tonight. And the only time he's ever faced Avilan, Luis walked him. And he goes up the middle for a base hit. Here comes Cabrera. The throw home, no chance. The Nationals lead 3-0 as Strasburg makes it a dozen career runs batted in. Steven Strasburg putting all the demons here at Turner Field to rest tonight. He's done it on the mound, and now he's done it at the plate. Sack bunt first time up, led to a run. Last time he walked, this time... He goes right back up the middle for a two out knock to score as Dribble Cabrera make this three nothing. Nationals, how about that? Now yeah, baby. Den now Denard Span. Yeah, Strasburg on base twice. Second RBI of the year. And Span thought about bunting for a hit there. That was the fifth RBI. By the entire pitching staff this year. Geo has a couple. Now Strasburg two. Jordan Zimmerman has the other.
And that hurts. When you're at home down by a couple and the pitcher does that to you. And Span sounded like it hit him. He turned around, took a quick look at Avilon before tossing the bat away. Two on, two out. And that'll do it for Avilon. Yeah, he's not going to face Rendon. Interesting little look out to the mound right there, huh? Yeah, Square around quick. the bunt. Maybe Avilon didn't like it. Maybe one just got away. Who knows? So Avilon, two thirds of an inning, two hits and a walk, a hit batter. The Nats have extended their lead to three, and we'll see what Rendon has next. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. So there's the grass of the ball diamond and there's the dirt of the base paths. The Nats have been quite busy around there last few innings. Three runners this inning, and here's the right hander, 27 year old Juan Jaime. Yeah, pretty big fastball. The guy can let it rip, so he's bringing the righty to face a righty. 12th game of the year for Jaime, ERA 5.59, and righty's hitting just 190. I'll give you an idea why he's in the game. One matchup at bat against Rendon, and Jaime struck him out. Anthony today to rear 0 for 3. A strikeout, a swinging strikeout, a long drive to left field caught, and then a fly ball high in the air to left center. RBI number 81 sitting out there. And he'll lay off the breaking ball. It's even 1 1. And then another lefty, Jason Shreve, for LaRoche, two batters away. Breaking ball hanging a bit. And a 1 2 fastball, 96 by him. Nationals pick up a run. Strasburg, the RBI, second of the year, 12th of his career, and the Hyundai, seventh inning stretch, arrives at Turner Field in Atlanta. The Nats have scored in the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Nothing odd about that. It's all Strasburg and the Nats.
at the stretch. And I think, FP, you made a good point a little while ago. Some demons to be taken care of by Steven Strasburg here tonight. The pitching, you know, the base hit the RBI. That's icing on the cake. What he's doing on the mound is job one. Yeah, we talked about his ERA here at Turner Field this year. Over seven, almost eight. And, and tonight he just come out. And you had a feeling the way the team is going, the way he's been pitching his last three starts. You know, not the outcome he wanted last time against the Braves at Nats Park. Made a mistake to B.J. Upton, but I noted that his fastball velocity and command, his last start against mm. the Braves was good. He just made a few mistakes, if you want to even call them mistakes. But tonight here at Turner Field is just... Ben unstrasburg like at Turner Field, and we yeah. love it. And then some uh, interesting moments from his battery mate, Wilson Ramos. A walk, a run, a home run. Denard Span has an RBI. It's been a good night so far. It has, and he's been the story. I, I, we already talked about the offense, but what he's done getting Freddie Freeman out, a guy who's historically owned the Nationals, especially this year, and just making big pitches in big situations. And on top of that, he got all the Freddies kicked out, so he's doing everything. Strasburg, 78 pitches, 50 strikes. And he throws a curveball that misses low to Justin Upton, bottom of the seventh underway. That's a hook that's in there. Counts even 1-1. Upton has bounced to short, lined out softly to Cabrera up the middle. Target is in. Pitch count's been good all night. 13 first inning, then just five with a double play, then 11, then 14, then 17, and then 18 last inning to get out of some trouble. And this ball popped up short left center. Ian Desmond's out there and he has it for the first out and Justin's 0 for 3. Inside the numbers with Jeep. The Nets haven't given up a run since Saturday night in New York. St. Louis with 20 Dodgers Nets. And then the Marlins Braves Reds on that list. I think the Nationals. About half of those are on days when Jordan Zimmerman has been pitching and the bullpen has followed him up very well. Hayward fly ball to left and a base hit. Went to third on an errant pickoff throw by Strasburg and with nobody out in the fifth. He had to stand there for three outs. Breaking ball outside two and oh. Ninety six to ninety eight down in the zone all night. Moving the fastball around seems like he's elevated it too when he's wanted to on occasion. And Hayward going the other way it's well out of play. Nate Scherholz has been in left field since the fourth inning when Bryce Harper left the ball game after experiencing some lightheadedness, we were told. And the fastball hit hard. LaRoche now a race to the bag. Strasburg gets there first. Well played by the first baseman and the pitcher. The best part about it after LaRoche made the initial play on a hard hit ground ball was he led Strasburg to the bag. That was going to be a foot race between Jason Hayward. You see the hesitation. Now Strasburg says, I got to get there. But the throw made him get there because he led him and kept him going toward the base. If you break late like Steven did right there and the throw is not in front, Jason Hayward has a chance to beat it. But a good job of recovering after the initial hesitation to get the second out. Chris Johnson, the batter, one for two.
First pitch curveball of beauty. Front door variety inner half. Johnson eight for 28 career against Strasburg. And he goes gas up and in 95. Yeah, talk about elevating that fastball when he wants to. You see him climbing the ladder right here, and tough to catch up to mid to upper 90s, letter high. What has he got for him? An 0-2, a nasty changeup. Wow. Strasburg's second 1-2-3 inning of the night. Seven Ks. He's gone at least seven for the 14th time this year. It's all Strasburg in Atlanta tonight. Volkswagen with a moment in history and for a change we're only going back seven days when Doug Fister was so good against the Braves and there's the yeah baby thing stayed in the game took care of business and behind Doug Fister that night on his 13th win of the year the Nationals beat the Braves 2 one didn't take long for that to catch on. Yeah, well, he was part of the Hum Babies when he played for Roger Craig in San Francisco, so I'm sure he digs the Yeah Baby. Most popular way to follow the Nationals' push to the postseason is watch us tomorrow night if this one holds up, or go to MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store. Visit MLB.com today. Worth LaRoche Desmond, 3 4 5, top of the eighth. Juan Jaime still in the game for the Braves. Worth hasn't faced him until right now. Seventy six the curveball is low. Worth lined out into the pitcher's glove. Santana grabbed one last time up and the count goes two and oh, a double in three trips. Tyler Clippard for the eighth. Craig Stammen in case the Nats would go up by more than three. Where's Bass and Dan Ben? He came out of the gate hot and heavy with like two reports. Here. We haven't <laughs> even heard from him about five innings. I think Is he, out of he feels this one's under control. Is he totally out of shape for taking three days off? His hands on his knees down there. <laughs> that look pretty much says it all. You get him on camera even when he's not making a replay. That's all right. Good to have Dan back. It is. For these last two weeks. Two and two to Worth. And Clippard usually doesn't warm up unless he's definitely coming in. Strasburg could be done after 90 pitches. 58 strikes. Seven Ks.
Three two and Worth draws the leadoff walk. Hey let's check in with Dan Colco. Dan what do you got going. Well let's tee it up boys might as well right FP. I uh, got a cool story to pass along regarding Michael Taylor and a couple of his teammates. They had a cool thing happen to them this afternoon when they got to meet the legendary Hank Aaron who was at the ballpark today doing an interview. He was down the hall from where the Nationals uh, weight room was. And when Taylor saw Aaron walk past the weight room, he popped his head out and introduced himself. And Aaron stopped in to have a brief chat with a 23-year-old outfielder, as well as Anthony Rendon, Jordan Zimmerman, and a couple of others. Aaron signed a ball for Zimmerman, took a few pictures with the players, including one with Taylor, which the rookie proudly posted on Twitter. Taylor said he asked Aaron what the secret was to all his success. Aaron's response, hard work and a lot of confidence. So those are words that he'll try and live by as he goes deeper into his big league career, guys. Wow. Hammer and Hank in Atlanta. What a thrill for those young guys. LaRoche is due up next. And the Braves coming with the left-hander Chasen Shreve when we bring you back to Turner Field. Brought to you by Honda and by New York Life and the agent of the game. Adam LaRoche eyeing a young pitcher he's never faced before. Atlanta Braves will go lefty lefty here with Jason Shreve who's appeared in eight big league games. Eight innings eight hits one run 11 strikeouts ERA 1.13. Called up from Double A Mississippi on July 19th. And a check of the runner worth. So he had five wins, a 267 ERA between Double A, Triple A. Nine out of ten in save situations. And a fastball by LaRoche at 91. Same junior college as Bryce Harper. And they know each other very well. Adam LaRoche show for three tonight. Strikeout. Drive to right caught by Hayward. Fly ball to center. Born and still lives in Vegas. 11th rounder by the Raves four years ago out of the College of Southern Nevada. 6'3, 185. 
and he's 24. Adam LaRoche rung up on the breaking ball. Took a moment for Tim Timmons, took a long look at it, and called out LaRoche first out of the eighth inning. As we promised you earlier in the game, here's your AT&T fan photo. Look into his glasses. Do you think that's a selfie? It's a two-armed one if it is. Yeah. We've seen everybody with those selfie sticks lately, but there it is. Nice selfie, guys. Thanks for the picture. We have another pitching change. So since Santana left, the Braves are about to employ their fourth pitcher in the last two innings. Desmond awaits. win last week 13 and 10 2.96 Aaron Harang was great against the Nats as the Braves salvaged a game out of that series at Nationals Park last week. So Harang 11 and 10 31st start 30th start for Roark who's 13 and 10 Nats extra 630 tomorrow night. Tightened up the beard got a haircut he's ready to rock. I mean, Roark has a chance to win 15. Fister, 16. Who knows? And here's Gus Schlosser, who appeared against the Nats in that series in Washington last week. Yeah, three quarter release guy. Fastball 89, slider 76, change up 80 miles an hour. Fastball two seam, he'll run it into right handers. Ian Desmond 0 for 1 against him. And Urban Santana saved some of his best nastiest pitches for Ian tonight. Called out in the second and the sixth on pitches right on the corners. Foul out in between with Worth at third, one out fourth inning. So Worth still at first after the walk. LaRoche struck out. Sherholtz on deck. And there's that sidearm sling. Worth back in. They're trying to pick off Jason Worth any way they can. Saucer threw over there about three times. Now Christian Bethencourt says, I'm going to get in the mix. You guys can't have all the fun. It's pretty close. Tag showed it to the umpire. You see why Schlosser's throwing over there. He's real slow to the plate. He's trying to protect against the steal because of his delivery. Very deliberate. It was kind of interesting. After the tag, Tardoslovich looked at the umpire, then looked into his dugout, maybe asking for a review, and then Worth looked in their dugout, and so did Tony Tarasco. So everybody was sort of freezing for a moment. I don't know if we've had any challenges on pickoff throws this year. When he goes, he goes and makes it. Desmond up the middle. 
bouncing behind the bag and well played by Goslin to Simmons for the 4 6 2 down. And just got in on him enough so that Goslin get the ball and flip it to Simmons. Simmons with a little bobble there at the end. But he definitely tagged the bag first before he was thinking about throwing to first. That might have had enough to get through if it didn't hit the mound and catch some air. Here's Nate Scherholtz. 0 for 1 with the base on balls. Lefty lefty matchup. Pardon me, the right hander stays in. No lefty lefty matchup. Braves have James Russell in their bullpen still. Ian Desmond, 21 steals, 26 attempts. This would be one of those meaningful times in which to steal. Medium lead for him. The front shoulder for Saucer is the key if you're Ian Desmond on first base. As soon as he comes set, it's open. And it's really the first thing that goes. Sometimes you'll key on the lower half. Every once in a while, you key on the upper half. Might show better from center field on how wide open he is. And then the first thing you're reading, see how he's open? And that shoulder's open. The first thing you do, roll it in. And that's where your key is if you're on first. It was kind of a frisbee of a breaking ball way in on Nate. Kind of see the feet peripherally, Carp, but if you have a front shoulder guy, you're looking at him. If he comes set open, the first thing he has to do is roll that mm. shoulder in, and that's your key. That's how you get a plus plus jump if you're a base dealer off of a guy like Slosser. Tony Tarasco, fully aware. Way inside, one and two. Three nothing ball game. Hits are even at five. Two outs here in the top of the eighth. Then he tried to come outside with that breaking ball. Delayed steal by Desmond. He's safe. Might have caught Beth in court. A count or two late. And that's number 22 for Ian Desmond. He went in hard to the bag. And Simmons might have caught a cleat. Most of the time you're trying to catch a middle infielder's nap and on delay steal. So if you don't see movement after the pitch, that's when you go. But he caught Beth in court sleeping. And Simmons got there on time, but he might have wore a cleat. Great heads up player by Desmond. I love the delay steal. I don't think it's used enough at the major league level. And that was close at second. Runner in scoring position. And it's up the middle. The base stolen will pay off in a fourth Washington run. Nate Scherholz checks in with his second Washington RBI. Huge. Off the bench, no idea he's playing. And if you missed it, Bryce Harper out with lightheadedness. Nate Scherholz inserted into the lineup. In the fourth hey, inning, hey, comes hey. through big time. Ian Desmond, delay steal. Nate Scherholz, two out knock. And the Nats are up 4 nothing. And this is getting fun. There's Ramos who's having a big night. Scherholz caught stealing earlier this evening. Short lead and a breaking ball that was hanging up for Wilson Ramos. That's 
talked to some of the guys on the plane last night. You look at Stan McGillis. They, they want to do it here. They don't want to mess around. And they want to do it here for the obvious reasons besides clinching. So Clippard sat down after that fourth run scored. Ramos severely jammed at a bouncing ball for Goslin. That's it for the top of the eighth. Lead off walk. A Desmond steal. A Sheerholz RBI for nothing Nationals. the whole thing up so for nothing Washington bottom of the eighth coming up and the DC area Toyota dealers all year long and really for several seasons now helping children and their families thirty seven dollars for every Nat strikeout by a pitcher to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. So Clippard sits Stammen in seven eight nine for the Braves here bottom eight. See what Carb, I touched on it last start for Strasburg. He, he missed the whole pennant chase last time. This is all new to him. You remember he had to sit on the sidelines last time and for him to come out in a huge game like this in Atlanta mm -hmm. and do what he did. Both on the mound and at the plate for that matter was just you know. That's not easy as a former athlete when you have a place that, that you've underperformed in your whole career. I mean, you just get off the plane you get in the bus you get to hotel you get that sick feeling in your stomach. And too hot to handle for Rendon. And to come out here and do what he did tonight was more than impressive. Seven shutout innings on five hits. Strasburg struck out seven. Did not walk a batter. Well, they must have some intel that says Bethancourt laid down a base hit, but I do remember him squaring around last time at Nats Park, so that's why Anthony Rendon was playing shallow right there, and Bethancourt got one by him. Nice swing. B.J. Upton a base hit back in the third struck out in the fifth. And that might have been the pivotal point of this game. Jason Hayward with the leadoff single got to third on the Strasburg air struck out Johnson got Bethancourt to ground out and then you were wondering rightly so it was a valid question whether he pitched to Upton or not with the pitcher on deck. Freddie Gonzalez had his bullpen up so you weren't guaranteed a pitcher and Strasburg went right after Upton strike him out. That that to me yeah. was the right move and you've heard me discuss that before 99 times out of honor I think you get to 
you walk the eighth guy to get to the pitcher but in that case when a guy is 165 K's you go right after him if he beats you tip your cap. Well those are the kind of strikeout situations that raise up in October. That's why it's important to have guys who have swing and miss stuff in postseason play. That ball gets away. Ramos had just picked one. Backhand loan away. That's a wild pitch. Bethancourt second base. Yeah, I wonder if Matt Williams there's times when you use your eight bullpen up by four and not up by three and I wonder if Matt Williams is thinking about it right now. I just watch him walk down. You know, Craig Stammen has been doing such a great job lately but there's certain times when we would see Davey Johnson do that four run lead big game go you know seven eight nine with his horses. B.J. Upton by the way two for eleven career against Stammen. The Uptons a combined three for twenty three against Stammen and a two one pitch. Ninety one just flying inside. We're within a base on balls. of getting the tying run into the on deck circle here. Ryan Domit on deck to hit for the pitcher. Jammed him. Ground ball. Rendon freezes the runner. Throws out Upton. Big out for Craig Stammen. Big out. And a non productive out for the Braves. The Nats will host their annual school supply drive on Saturday, September 27, with the Nats play the Marlins at 4:05. Fans are encouraged to bring new school supplies to benefit DC public schools. Donations will be accepted at the center field gate through the end of the second inning. All right. Number two pencils are always a good gift. Mm. Tyler Clippard back up, maybe in case they get one more base runner. Is Ryan Domit, who's one for five career against Craig Stammen. And as a pinch hitter this year, 13 hits, two of them homers, seven RBIs. And Stammen with the slider, actually a curveball, 79 for the strike. Not the mid 80s on the slider. And then 92 tailing away with good sink. And him reaching. Long way for Rendon. It's close and he's got it. Approaching the barrier. Well done by Anthony Rendon to out. Solid play. The ball wasn't hit high enough to take your eye off and know where he at. So as an infielder right here, you see the last glances before he even gets to the warning track. He's kind of feeling for the fence with his right hand. But that is a tough play folks. He didn't have time to check where he was at and he made it nonetheless. Good range. A nice job of finding the fence. Next up is the former Virginia Cavalier Phil Goslin. 0 for 1 career against Stammen. 0 for 3 tonight. Fly ball to center. Two grounders. Looks like that out of Upton has gotten Stammen in the groove here in the eighth inning. Lead off man on you wonder where the innings going when he falls behind Upton comes back to get BJ. Slider away. Right there, Cabrera, who will lead off in the top of the ninth inning. So our Honda Duop is a guy named as Drupal Cabrera. 
who the Nats picked up 38 games ago. He's hit the ball hard twice tonight. A liner to center, a double down the left field line. He has scored one of the Nats' runs tonight. Both sides of the ball tonight, pitching, hitting, and then some defense thrown in. The Nats, 4-6-1. The Braves, 0-6-0. This went into the top of the ninth inning. And James Russell, 28-year-old left-hander, son of a former major leaguer, Jeff, who is a hard-throwing right-hander. A fastball, 89. Slider, 81. He'll cut the fastball at 88. Curveball change to go with it. 62nd appearance for Russell. You see right he's hitting 163 off the left hander. So it's Cabrera. Then the number nine spot. For Kevin Franzen top of the order Denard Spann top nine. So Craig Stammen. A base hit but a good comeback for the next three hitters in the eighth inning. Cabrera goes up swinging. You know, the differences I see between 2000, 2012, 2014 of this ball club are enormous. You remember in 2012, they, they weren't supposed to be there. It was just kind of enjoying the ride and happy to be here mentality, get to the playoffs. What is this like? What is that like? This is so cool. And, I mean, you heard the reaction from the players. It was almost like first experience at Disneyland. And this year, it's just such a fine focus, and you've seen it kind of even be more fine direct reflection of the skipper. But the last couple of weeks you've seen him kind of tighten things up. There, there, there's there's more focus on the faces. There's uh, more of a presence about these guys. But I think 2012 came as a surprise. They were all young players. It was their first go around. But the experience they've gathered from that and even last year with all the expectation and not getting the playoffs even though they were 10 games over 500. This is a whole different ball club and a way better team for a number of reasons. That ball hit hard to left right at Upton by Cabrera. But the main being experience. In the game. I see I saw all I need to see the other night in New York when they weren't happy with something that happened the night before and instead of talking about it in the media they came out and took care of it. That's what champions do. They don't talk they do. And this team has a chance to do a lot of special things in the month of October. It's going to be fun to watch. And Kevin Franz will be next against Russell facing him for the first time. Rafael Soriano for the ninth inning with a four run lead. Well I thought Tyler Clippert said it greatly on. The MLB Network today when they interviewed him here he said two years ago we were young. We were all young. He said now. We've all got. 
some experience from that another season 13 another full season. Kevin Franzen takes a hack. It's 0-2 here in the ninth. Over by the dugout and out of play. Well, August 9th, Kevin Franzen, you remember it was after the tough loss on the eighth, came off the bench. And the bases loaded. Double that scored everybody. Even Wilson Ramos from first base. Great teams do. Everybody contributes. One through 25. No, not the first time he's been a hero on the road this year. Home run earlier in Arizona. Months ago. Helped the Nats win a series. One ball, two strikes. Trying to take Russell the other way. Atlantic Sports Report is back tomorrow. The guys will be with you at 5 o'clock. That'll be 90 minutes of great baseball talk, leading you right into Nats Extra. And that's tomorrow night before Tanner Roark takes on Aaron Harang. Do they put tarps on in their studio too? Just in case? <laughs> no, they're rolling either way. Franzen, and that'll be caught by the running Phil Goslin. Two outs. Top of the order, Denard Span on base twice tonight. RBI doubled in the third, the first run of the game, hit by a pitch in the seventh. Denard has faced Russell twice. He's 0 for 2 with a ground ball and a fly. Looking forward to watching Mission October later tonight. Nats are featured. They had all the cameras and mics, have all the players mic'd up. Apparently, one of the funnier things they're, they're showing tonight is Denard Span getting hit by a pitch and he was mic'd up and he didn't know if the ball hit the ground first and hit you that it still counted as a hit by pitch. They had actually had him mic'd up for a discussion with the home plate umpire and he was. He wanted to hit. He didn't want to go to first, and he didn't know the rules, so he went to first. And they had him mic'd up in the in the Nats dugout, asking teammates if they knew the rule. And they're like, "Yeah, if the ball hits the ground first, and you get it, it's a hit by pitch." But that's a hitter's mentality, right? He wants his base hits. That's a good take on a nasty breaking ball by Russell. And on a pitch up, the Nats are gone. One, two, three, ninth inning. Last time Soriano pitched, seventh inning in New York Saturday. Tonight, ninth inning in Atlanta.
Observation by Ray, who uh, knows all about September stretch drives and drives to postseason, about what Strasburg did here today. You know, check out a game summary and show you Steven Strasburg. I couldn't agree with Ray Knight more. He's absolutely dead on. It's a guy that didn't have a chance to do the whole pennant race thing last time. Definitely didn't have a chance to do the whole postseason thing last time. And in a place where he hasn't had good starts and all kinds of weird stuff has happened to him throughout his career. He comes up big, as big as he's ever appeared in any game in his career. Last four starts for Strasburg, 28 strikeouts and no walks. Let that marinate for a second. That is some kind of pitching late in the season. So here we go to the bottom of the ninth. Rafael Soriano. I think he just needs to treat this like it's a safe situation and do his thing. Adjustments have been made. Let's see how they go with a chance to be on the mound when the game's over, which is what he's used to. High in the zone for a strike. We just slowed down the delivery. Everything's more compact when he gets to the top, kind of hovers over the mound for a second, really working on keeping his head back. And Steve McCaddy looking extremely close. That was a great shot. Eh? Just bearing down on the mechanics of Soriano. Simmons, one for four career against the right hander. And that was an off speed pitch hanging up. It's into the gap in left center. Simmons. Second consecutive double and a long airmail throw finds its way to Adam LaRoche. Just it, now, how big is this? The hitter coming up is not Freddie Freeman. Well, it was a cutter up and Simmons was all over it. Took a strike and then went to work. Freeman ejected in the sixth inning. Jardoslavich at first base ever since. First at bat career against Soriano, and again, there's that high strike. Even though Soriano always looks calm, that motor's running fast, and the key to staying back and getting it out front and on top is being calm. And if the game's moving fast and your your emotions get a hold of you, that's when as a hitter you get jumpy and you go out to get the fastball, you're fired up. Same thing with a pitcher. You jump out there and try to throw it harder. In actuality, you end up throwing it slower because your arm is trailing. In on 0-2, he goes up and in, 92 to strike him out. Some late life on the cutter right here. Elevated. But Tudoslavich can't catch up. So a big first out here in the ninth. Justin Upton is next. Like his brother, one for seven career against Soriano. Drew Stern pops up just in case that tying run makes it into the on deck circle. And there's a slider up in the zone for a strike. So stealing strike one upstairs to three consecutive hitters. One more base runner, it becomes a save situation. His last outing in New York, everything was either a low strike or below the strike zone. And it was nice. He was staying back, had his release point out front, really had good late movement on the slider and the cutter. Tonight so far, he's been elevated. And a ball hooked down the left field line. We might see Drew Storen in a moment. The Braves are on the board. Throw in the second, and safe is Upton. And 
And this team is explosive, and you give them a crack, they'll take advantage. And I think Matt Williams realizes that. Steve McCaddy calling down the bullpen. He's waiting for an answer. Here's Hayward. Still waiting for an answer. Bad time to have bad service. Hayward career against Soriano two for five with a home run. Hayward pops it up to left. Nate Scherholz. Two down. Here's Johnson, the batter. Matt Williams staying with Soriano and finding out a thing or two. Johnson against Soriano, career 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Well, if he reaches, you're seeing Storm. Oh, yeah. Could have happened after the last hit because it was a safe situation suddenly. But how about the absence of Freddie Freeman in the Atlanta lineup here in the ninth inning? In that number three spot. Always seems to go that way when one of your key guys gets ejected early. And Soriano close but missing. On the outside edge, the count three and oh. The rookie catcher Bethancourt is on deck. That close. That's going to do it. Tying runs into the batter's box. Soriano will retire just two of the five hitters he faces. He gives up two hits, a walk, a strikeout, and it'll be Drew Storen for a one out save against a rookie catcher. At least scheduled that way when we bring you back to Turner Field in Atlanta. The Nats 4 1. This one a ways from being over.
last week on Tuesday, Drew Storen faced Christian Bethencourt, got him on a fly ball to left field in a 1 2 3 inning. They've seen each other once, and here's Drew Storen for the save. Yeah, put in a tough situation right now. Tie and run at the plate, guys got pop. Two seam fastball, four seam fastball, cut fastball. Don't forget about that. We talked about it yesterday. He's added that to the arsenal. Slider, power change. Really a five pitch guy where he used to be a two pitch guy. For some speed, Emilio Bonifacio running at first for Johnson. All that really matters is the pitcher batter matchup. Bethancourt base hit last time up against Craig Stammen in the eighth. And the breaking ball at 82 is in there. Rarely throws a first pitch fastball now. That's how much confidence he has in throwing any pitch for a strike. Then he goes with the 93 for a strike. A challenge fastball, not a whole lot of location to it, but was down in the zone, and Bethencourt can't catch up. Good take. I don't wow. know how he took that. 83 flirting with the outside corner. I swung so hard at that in my head. <laughs> Up and in with the heater, ball two. Well, you can use a slider off that if you want. Start on the outer half, run it off, you still got a pitch to play with. See if he'll chase. Well located slider works right here. Runners on the move here with three and two. Change up, base hit. Upton scores. Bonifacio to third. And now the tying runs on base. You got a pinch run here, don't you? I'm surprised they use. You know, they've got Romero Pena in there. Bonifacio in that situation. Yeah. The run that counts is on first base. I sat back once again by Bethencourt going up the middle and keeping the line moving. Yeah, Bonifacio did get to third, but that means nothing. So now it's B.J. Upton, who's 0 for 5 career against Drew Storen. That bounces, gets away. Bonifacio stays at third, but the tying runs at second base. Unbelievable. It's just a tough time of year to work on things and experiment with guys. And wow, this is shocking. A base hit could tie the game. So we'll see if Upton changes his approach at all. One of the most struck out hitters in the league this year. One for three tonight. And 93 with wicked movement at the end right in there. I mean, hard to see big picture right now, I know, but this is a good situation for Drew Storm to be in. If he's going to close in October, he needs this. They can't all be one, two, three lovey dovey saves. There are going to be some tough ones down the road. And this is when you got to stick your nose in there. Here we go. 
Tommy Lestella on deck. That's the pitcher's spot. Close to the corner. Ball three. It's all right. You got to throw that pitch away. It's all about the next pitch. And that's the mentality Drew has to have right here. Thought it was a good pitch. Maybe a little out, but it's all about this pitch. That's over. What do you do now? Upton to Desmond knocks it down at first game over Ian Desmond stays with it shoots a rocket to LaRoche and somehow Drew Storen gets it done the magic number is two unbelievable play to end this one and get the magic number to two I thought he had no chance at Upton he stayed with it the ball was hit so hard that he had an extra click and he stayed with the play and I thought he would just throw it there just in case he ended up getting them. So a game that shouldn't have had any of this drama turns out to have tons of drama. And look how this one ends. Cannon by Ian Desmond, who had a tough night at the plate, but it doesn't matter because he just made the biggest play of the year. Look at him stay with it. Bare hand over the top. Ending all the drama. And folks, it just turned into Christmas Eve. The Nationals hold on to win it 4-2. Both of those runs in the ninth charged to Soriano. Drew Storen.